So today is a big day. Today, we are gonna work to hopefully get the vault altar as automated as humanly possible. And uh, it's gonna involve some very expensive things. I already looked, I think we're gonna have to craft a bunch of pogs today, a bunch of pogs. And uh, the reason behind the pogs is this right here. I need a compacting drawer for every type of block. Uh, but first I wanna test it and make sure these even work in the compacting drawers. But uh, I need to make sure that we can uncraft these. Now we can't use any method of uncrafting um, other than compacting drawers. So these are hopefully going to work. Um, but I did go ahead and count out how many of these I needed, which uh, is this exact amount, minus 19, which is the amount of items we have in here, because I'm gonna put 19 crafting drawers in here. But I do have a nice extension. As you can see, I am going to be lining out a bunch of storage drawers to add to our storage infrastructure. And uh, this is going to actually contain this wall. Actually, I'm going to try and fill out these uh, these pillars first with every item that is actually needed inside the vault altar. And uh, I'm going to make sure to have a drawer for every single one of them in, in this setup. That's the goal. That's the goal. And uh, I'm going to be pulling up that list. I believe it is posted on the wiki, um, all of the actual items that the, the altar can roll. So it's going to be kind of interesting. I'm going to go one by one and try and add them to these drawers. But first, I've got to place all these drawers in. So as you can see, I did a little bit of testing with a compacting drawer. I do have to place the base item in first that I want. So it is only going to compress up to tier two, which is perfectly fine. However, we do get tier three a lot inside of our uh, system. So in reality, it'd be best to like have one for each. But that is just not going to be something I want to set up right now. Um, I think the best thing is, is if I get a tier three, just to go ahead and uncraft those tier threes, it's not going to take me any time at all, as you can see, and we'll go from there. Um, so yeah, how much is this going to cost me? Well, I need 19. I have 19 items here. So 19, and it's going to cost two pogs each. So we need 38 pogs for this. Uh, well, minus two, because we just made this drawer. But this is the recipe for compacting drawers. Yes, it requires stone, two pistons, which we have uh, a few, um, some drawers itself, and uh, yeah, pogs. And we're gonna need, uh, well, 18 now. Um, and it does hold a lot of items. That is one good thing about this, is it does store a bunch of materials. It holds 128 stacks per drawer, but I'm pretty sure it's dependent on stacks that are up here. So uh, yeah, it, it will basically compact up to this. And so it can hold 128 stacks of tier two or times two compressed, which is actually a whole bunch of blocks. Man, this really hurts me to craft, but we have totally enough. I just need to make 36 more pogs. Oh, it just, it, it, it hurts me. Gems, that knocked our gem count way down, especially on like Iscalium. We totally can't craft a pog at this point or a, a no mega pog for sure. But, I mean, I really need this. This is going to make running vaults way faster. I need to think that. This will help me run vaults quicker. Now, another thing I want to do with this is definitely turn this into decorations. Like, I definitely want to be able to decorate. And uh, I'm going to be making them look just like all of the others. So, let's see. Can I put it like that? Yes, I can. By the way, does this allow me to do the whole stack with just one item? No, I have to actually have all the items. Okay, I was just making sure. And... We'll pull all this out. And there we go. 19 framed drawers. Just like that. All ready to go. Hopefully I can uh, line this up so it looks really nice. There we go. And one here. And we will put two more drawers up here. I don't know what exactly we'll put in them. But they're going to go like that. That looks good. This is perfect. Um, now I need to go through... And I'm going to get each item just by doing this. I'm going to go with like dirt, for example. Dirt will go in here. And all of these are going to end up being locked. But dirt, stone, like these are all the materials that I think um, we're going to have. We're, of, of course, I'm going to end up putting um, all the different basic materials in as well. Because we do find those in the vaults. So I have all of this in here. And uh, well, unfortunately, sand is the only one that is really broken in this setup. I can't I can't use sand, unfortunately. Um, now, I can do this. But then again, this is definitely not what I want happening 
this is like is, is bugged out. So I definitely don't want to have it doing that. And if I try and use a compressed version of sand in tier one, it's not really doing exactly what I want. Um, as you can see, it is doing this instead, um, which is not what I want. No matter where I put it, of course, it's always going to give me back the base tier and then scale up to tier three, which is not what I want because to be able to pull out from here, I want to make sure that it is pulling out this item, right? The the main item I want in sand. Unfortunately, I can't do that. So I'm just going to have to have a really large drawer for sand. And unfortunately, I guess manually uncompressed sand. That's the only one that I'm really not going to be able to do. So I have everything in and it was actually a lot less than I thought it was. Um, but inside here, I'm laying out all this trim. Now, uh, remember, these work like pipes. So I do have this frame trim connected to all of the base here running from the controller that is over here. So there are two controllers. Each side is running its own controller. And uh, well, I'm about to connect this one. So you can see right here, this is trim. This is trim, trim. And then right here is more frame trim. And that runs into here to another frame trim. And we're good. All I gotta do is just get rid of all the frame trim and then go back to the actual concrete and material and just fill this back in uh, as if it was never even messed with look at that and this is actually all hooked to our network so it's, it's, it is hooked in i just do i need to change the priority on the way this is actually set up now but i do need to clean this up as you can see get this looking nice again there we go you would never even know that was there how cool is that so now for this particular setup here I want to make sure these are set to priority six higher priority than our other storage network. So that way these end up filling up first and then all the other items start going elsewhere. Well, actually on this side, probably don't need the priority. This can actually be priority four, um, which is higher than our drawer network. This side I have set to priority six. So that way all of these items are prioritized, right? Um, and I do have everything in here except for flowers. I did not put the flowers in the list. Um, I might put those in here later um, after we get some sort of automation set up for them. But at the moment, I don't have automation for them. And I don't want it to go like, okay, I have a flower and then throw it in here. And then I have to go searching for that flower again when I could just bone mill the flower right here and it does it really quick. Um, but yeah, I think we can potentially start to craft uh, over here. I think all I have to do is make an altar and then I'm gonna show you how I hook up the altar to these storage drawers. And honestly, it's just going to be an altar hooked up to this storage drawer, which should work. So hooking up these altars, it's just as simple as literally this. So I'm going to place this one directly on the bottom here. And uh, this should work. We just have a ultimate logistic, oop, not two of these, ultimate logistical transporter. A single one going right to the bottom here. It's going to pull straight out just like that. And then we'll set up another one on the other side to do the exact same thing. Right now, of course, I need to make sure to put that trim back. Um, but once we hook this up, which is going to go, this one a little bit jankier. Look at the, the eye on the bottom. Actually, I never noticed there's a thing on the bottom. There's a texture on the bottom that kind of looks like a vault diamond or an eye spying on you. Hmm, interesting. All right, configurator. And then that will pull from there into that one. And then all we have to do is place back our framed trim, which is our pipe, <laughs> just colored, and uh, we should be good. Um, now, unfortunately, there I don't have a great way to test this out just yet, because what I need to do is I need to pull out all of these materials out of storage and make sure it goes back into this. This does have a higher priority, so any material that I pull out, um, including all of the stone and stuff, will go into here. And so even if I compact it, it should technically go into this. So if I compact diorite, it should pull out all that. And now when I put it back in, that should now it see it shows it, but it should now be inside of storage. So it does show the, the raw amount and it's going to, it is going to give a little bit of an interesting uh, perception of how this works, but yeah. All of this now is going to be it's where it's stored. All right, so moment of truth. I know this isn't going to be 100% because a lot of these items that are in here right now 
Um, haven't 100% been fully moved over, uh, but they should work. Let's see. At least the main big chunk of the items should work. Um, except for, like, seeds and stuff, which I know I'm not going to have a lot of. Um, concrete. Let me go ahead and fix my floor. There we go. Uh, and all I gotta do is just put the crystal in. And then hope that everything gets transferred over. Um, so like a saddle, for example, should get transferred over once the coal is transferred over. I did find a use, by the way, since I can't put sand in here. Did find a use. That is a lot of rotten flesh. I don't think... I had 7,000 rotten flesh. Uh -huh. I mean, I know it's pulling from the storage, but look, it's it's basically automated. Um, once I get all that rotten flesh, it'll end up going back into this, which will be way faster, as you can see. It ended up pulling the items out way faster than uh, the exporter from refined storage can do. And these are max upgrades, by the way, for this. So this is as fast as I can go. The, the logistical pipe can pump way faster than that. So I'm definitely using the, uh, the drawers for that. This is working. It's working good. This is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, minus <laughs> rolling that much rotten flesh. Now, there's nothing I can do about rolling something that I just don't have enough of. Um, like, for example, this. I don't have a way of, of having a mob farm constantly running like that, and not until late game. Very late game. So, uh, I, I mean, I guess I could maybe upgrade our system that we have over there, but other than that... That's it. I mean, this is this is as fast as it's going to get. So after farming a little bit of zombies, I only had to farm like 200 or so rotten flesh. This one is complete. Now let's see if we can't roll one that's a little bit nice, nicer. That would nearly instant complete. This one might. I don't know if I put a whole stack of those in there. But as you can see, it did almost complete. I'm just missing sea pickles. Which, if I put those back in there, that one will complete. And there we go. That's how fast it should be. That right there just makes this way, way better. So of course, now that I've started making crystals, I might as well run some vaults, right? And I'm gonna run some more random vaults. They're gonna be, uh, hopefully, hopefully they turn out good. Uh, but before I do that, I do have to adjust my armor. This piece is about to break. Of course, I don't want it to break. Um, I wanna be able to use it for one of my, uh, my minions downstairs, of course. Um, so I'm going to be uh, taking this off and switching to this. This is the pair that I made a few episodes ago. Um, these two pieces of gear, um, I have been using, of course, the chest piece. You can see how many repairs. This thing is going to last forever, which is amazing. Um, and it's it's great that it is going to last this long because this is an awesome piece of gear. Um, but right here, I do want to switch to this. Now, this isn't going to last forever, um, nor is my, uh, yeah, my vault boot boots. These are going to need repairing eventually, too. Um, unfortunately, and, uh, yeah, my chest is about to, to run out as well. I'm still gonna let my chest wear out, um, and get a little bit lower before I change it. But my helmet definitely needs to be repaired. So, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my boots. I'll leave these in here. And, uh, I'll go ahead and give this pair of boots to my new Eternal. This one. This is actually a new Eternal that, uh, I just got. So, let's go ahead... And, uh, what would I need? A life scroll? Yeah, this this one has no gear at the moment, so... Uh, very easily, uh, unalivable. But it is giving me slowness, or giving, uh, slowness to, uh, times three to, uh, enemies in the radius. But as you can see, I, I spec'd it on health. I should have spec'd all of these on health, by the way. And look, it gives it even more health. Like, this is gonna be a really nice eternal once everything's said and done. I'm trying, I, I went ahead and upgraded these... Uh, as, mu as many of them as I could, I upgraded, and I really need to spec for health. I think there's a way to respec all of their stuff. Um, I forget what the item is, but you you definitely can respec them, and eventually I want to do that. I, think, I just think it's kind of expensive to do it. Um, so, I'm going to get all this uh, transferred over, including getting this looking like all the rest of the armor. All right, so after that got all settled, I think we're looking pretty good. The only thing I don't have on it, of course, is the uh, the plating. I still need to put plating on this. Um, but I'm not worried about it right now. I want to run this vault. So, I'm running this without afterlife. So, let's hope it's not locked. Like, it can literally be anything, just not locked. Come on. Let's, let's see what this is. And hopefully, it's good. Oh, and it has journey. I've noticed that here recently, they've had uh, a lot more, uh, like, modifiers related towards that. Now, 
this has this is actually really nice it's plentiful and gilded speedy and journey and it's it's a longer vault wait hold on why can't i break oh this is set to fast there we go yeah so <laughs> this is actually kind of crazy this is a a very long vault 30 some odd minutes man i hope we find some good rooms in this for sure i think with it being so long i'm going to use a different strategy for going through this vault i'm going to be heading all the way straight and then i'm going to turn right head all the way down that way turn left head all the way down that way turn right and do it that way i think that should be the uh the best way to go about doing this as far as gilded chests they go i've not seen a whole lot of them where's all my gilded chests at definitely a lot of regular chests there's the gilded chests and this is a perfect room this is plentiful so man if we find a mine room in this which would be fantastic. I would I would not mind spending all my time in a mine room. Oh, that's going to be awesome. And you know, this is only of three obelisks. So there's our first obelisk. This is going to be pretty nice. Look at that vault diamond we just got, by the way. Second obelisk. I just got to be careful now not to accidentally click on an obelisk. Ooh, another gym room. Very nice. I'll take this crystal. So here we are again with this upside down room. Now, I still don't know if I 100% understand how this is supposed to operate i'm going to try my best to do this i need to get all the way up top okay so we are up top in the laboratory now what i'm hoping i can do is get this to go appropriate i think this is the submit button i need to know what this is this is a slow falling potion and we can look up slow falling just to make sure slow falling it is phantom membranes and an awkward potion so with that being an awkward potion we know to send nether wart like that and i think we have to wait until we hear the sound of brewing could be wrong don't remember how long it takes <laughs> um okay there it went there was the brewing sound and then phantom membrane we turn this and we send so we send phantom membrane that should give us slow falling oh i see the light that must mean it's brewing maybe <laughs> i'm trying to figure this out i think i might have figured it out though once we hear it complete just waiting for the noise. Love that there's no mobs. Makes it less. Okay, there it goes. And then we submit. Ooh! Very cool. And actually, I mean, that wasn't bad. It wasn't a whole lot of chests for the amount of time you have to spend waiting on it, but still, that's pretty neat. Everything else in this room is pretty meh, honestly. <laughs> This is uh, one of those rooms where it's it's like lackluster compared to everything else. All the clouds, instead of chests, it's stone down here. So yeah, not the greatest of rooms. Oh yeah, here's an end room. This will be good. I just mined up some echo. Did you see that? There was echo. The luck. And another end room. Yes. Thank you. Hey, there's an obelisk. I'm going to go ahead and mark this one. Actually, let's mark it multiple times. So that way, different color. But yeah, uh, we should be able to come back to this. It's actually a great area to fight it. Ooh, look what I just found. Yes. All right, before it gets too busy, let's get down here and actually get this finished. 
Puzzle room! Good old Simon says. And this one's actually pretty easy. And there we go. Bump it up. Perfect. Grab all of these. All right. Now to get out of here. We're taking all this damage. Bam. Nice. I feel like I'm being handed vault diamonds. I've seen so many vault diamonds enter into my bag. It's so nice. Now I know why people are like, uh, I've, I've talked to people that have been like, oh yeah, I have just too many vault diamonds. Like I don't even know what to do with them. It's literally this reason. Like once you get higher levels, vault diamonds definitely become a little bit easier on you to obtain. Oops, I pushed a, pushed a button. I did a thing. Oh boy. Setting everything on fire. I'm so... <laughs> getting so lucky with these rooms. Like the only thing that could have been better would be like, I don't know, if we would have gotten like a, uh, a mining room, like that would have been the only thing that would have been better. This, so many. I mean, this has turned into a vault diamond run for sure. So we're down to five minutes. Let's go ahead and put this boss in his place. This will take literally no time at all. Look at those slams are doing like 150 damage. And get wrecked. Wow. Easy. And I hope this boss crate gives us maybe an artifact. We have a 15% higher chance than normal of getting one. And let's see what we got. Ooh, we got a key at least and an unidentified relic, but we did not get an artifact, but that's okay. That's to be expected. Another dragon's breath. So many dragon's breath. Okay, well, I will take my key and all the mod boxes. By the way, I do want to open up all the mod boxes I have. I think I have like over 30 <laughs> mod boxes. I mean, we can of course see. I mean, I have, I have a ton and we have create. So oh, we have 51 mod boxes. The, that's insane. So we could open that up and, you know, hope for the best. Now from this vault, let's see what we looted real quick. 11 vault diamonds or, or 10 vault diamonds from that. Not bad. And we got a mod box. Um, and then random drops. Let's see. I like the mystery boxes and the burgers. We had about 10 considering that. Three echo gem though. Yeah, we're rolling in echo gems. I love that. And uh, a few traders. Not bad. Not bad. This was a pretty decent run for it being a random vault, you know? I like these random vaults because, you know, it's always nice to jump into something new and you never know what those modifiers are gonna be. All right, let's do this mod box time. Okay, mod box, 54 mod boxes. I mean, oh, who knows what can roll here, but it's all gotta be decent, right? I mean, no matter what we get, it can't be bad, other than furniture, I guess. So, with all of it open, let's take a look at what we got. We got a cooking table. Ooh, we got Nixie tubes. That's some create stuff. I was hoping for, like, some water wheels. That would have been really nice. Still don't know 100% of what all we got, but I do know I got some fire runes. Uh, framed controller slave. Let's see, an oven. A uh, bunch of backpacks. We have tons of that. Advanced shulker box, a fridge. Dank, dank tier two, not bad. Um, common backpack, storage modules. A tier two storage module. And it looks like an advanced fluid tank, machine frame, a cinder module, MK3, hold on. This requires echo pog, so this is actually a good find. This is a cinder module MK3, that's actually a really nice find. Um, blazing generators, uh, this right here, I believe, yeah, it generates power from blaze rods, which is kind of nice, but we don't really need it too much. Exporters, a planter from supplementaries, which is an interesting way 
of just like farming a single plant. Uh, power cell medium from RF Tools Power. This can store power. Don't really need that. A basin and then a 1K storage drive, which I'll keep. Other than that, we got some Nixie tubes. <laughs> and uh, if you don't know what Nixie tubes are, they're kind of an interesting way of, uh, of, of just displaying information. Um, I think by default they display the redstone amount. But there's another interesting thing you can do with them. If you have enough connected, you can actually use a name tag. And you can name tag and change what they say. Um, so it's a pretty cool little thing for for displaying information. And uh, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Um, it'd be really nice if I had a way of like ticking them up consistently. Um, and like increasing the number all the way up. And then we can like, every time we run a vault, we can just always have this number lingering above that says how many uh, vaults we've ran. That'd be kind of cool. Um, but yeah. That actually wasn't bad for the mod boxes. It wasn't a, a great either, but I'm going to go ahead and throw that in there and let's keep rolling. You know what? I guess if I'm opening those, I might as well go ahead and uh, do the rest of the stuff. I have 700 more relic booster packs. I can go ahead and dump those. It's funny. I get about this many just from running maybe four or five volts. Like it's pretty, it's, it's quite insane how many relic booster packs you can actually gather quickly late game like this but let's see if we can hopefully get <sighs> the chances are so low uh, of just completing these last two who knows we'll eventually get them and after rolling all of them yep we didn't get any <laughs> anything fancy now it's time to roll all these which these are just a bunch of random items that'll end up going into storage so with all that i think it's time to just run another random crystal i'm i'm hoping this is a good one uh anything but locked may the vault gods be ever in my favor. That's that's what I got to say. Hopefully, that's the case. And we have a chaotic, lucky, resilient, strong. Chaotic is plus seven mobs. And wow, I think this actually might be an early scavenger completion, maybe? Like... Just because it's chaotic doesn't mean the mobs are harder. It just means that we're going to have an easier time completing all this stuff. We just leave these guys down here for a minute and uh, let's see what all we can collect, you know? That should be pretty easy, right? Plus it gives all these guys slowness. Oh, I love this. So yeah, this actually is a pretty decent place. Since there's so many mob spawners and then we have the plus seven, this is actually a pretty good place to farm all this, like right off the bat. I still have two things that need to be farmed out of chests and we do have uh, some drowned hide that we have to complete. But other than that, it's, it's gonna be the creepers, I think that's gonna be the hard part. All right, so all I have to do is find one of these places to turn this stuff in. And honestly, just keep farming the mobs. Here we go. We can turn some stuff in. Uh, hopefully, and start to get some uh, some other random stuff. That's the goal. I think that was another book. That's complete. And so yeah, I need spiders and some drowned. Shouldn't be too bad. And a bunch of creepers. I think drowned have a chance of spawning in these areas? Could be wrong though. Now they definitely spawn down here. Pretty sure. Oh yeah, there's some drowned. You know what? I think with the mob spawning like this, it's actually going to be pretty difficult to get drowned to actually spawn because I think they're they spawn from the spawners, and it might be kind of difficult actually. The more I've tried in these areas, the more I'm like, yeah, that may not work. Is this going to be my chance? I think I found some drowned. They were hiding from me. And, oh, I got three drowned hide from that. Oh, the luck. You've got to be kidding me. The luck. Now, I believe it's just a matter of, like, waiting. Like, we just need to go back to an area and just farm spiders and stuff. Like, pretty straightforward. If I don't get everything right here. 
All right, let's turn that in. And all we need is literally spiders. All right, all we need is one more spider after that spider. Woo! Come on, spiders. Where you at? Oh, spooters. All right, will this spider be it? No. Bummer. It's actually a pretty good strategy just running back and forth between hallways. Because it seems like new mobs spawn every time we go into a hallway. This area is actually a pretty decent area to farm stuff. I wonder. I can't just get that one spider of eight minutes to get a spider. Oh, there's two spiders. Come on. All I need is one. One item. And we got it. Oh, we completed it. Okay. Whew. Let's just go ahead and dump all of this and complete the scavenger hunt. Whew. Scavengers, man, are always stressful, but I love completing them. They also grant really good rewards. Very nice. I am now battered in arrows. <laughs> just complete. I got, think I got one in my knee. I don't know how I'm going to be able to, if I'm going to be able to go forward with one in my knee. But let's see. Okay. Four unidentified relics. Oh, come on. Come on. I just need one. Just one completed. Come on. That's not what I need. What is that? Another cupcake? Ah, oh, never gonna complete this. But, hey, actually not bad. Look at all this. Now, um, stuff that I did get. I don't know how many vault diamonds I would have gotten from this. Yeah, none. Um, but we did get two key pieces somehow. <laughs> Okay, and we got some catalyst fragments, which is what it's all about. Um, Echo, did I'm pretty sure I seen some Echo. We got some trader cores. I, I tried to break some chests, I just didn't get to break very many of them. And we did get two Echo. That's nice. And uh, twelve ball burgers. You know what? It's all about the fun, though. Really, I, you know, I could care less if I get you know a ton of items, but. The scavenger vaults are just super fun to complete. So with that, we have one more thing I want to do, and that is to pop this. Let's see. Ah, oh, nothing here. That's really nice. Dolomite is actually kind of nice. Nothing else, though. I mean, I, I don't really need extra granite. Don't really need concrete. We'll just go with dolomite. Don't really have a great use for it. I do have some, and I don't know if I have... Dolomite laid down. Actually, I think that is dolomite. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So we actually do have a spot for it. So yeah, well, today has been quite an interesting day. I must say so myself. That's, I mean, wow, we got automation done for this. And like, I mean, I know it, it doesn't seem like much, but that's a lot. That saves me so much work having all of this done. So that is fantastic. But of course, guys, I do want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And that huge thanks, my friends, is going to go to, oh boy, Filthy Pasta. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over in the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member. And of course, guys, if you're interested in joining the Discord, all you gotta do is go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. And of course, find all the amazing stuff there. Of course, if you're also looking for some merch, I know it is getting closer to the holiday season, and you want to maybe grab some merch while you can, all you gotta do is go to chosenarchitect.store and uh, and grab some awesome merch there. Guys, I'd really appreciate it. And of course, click that subscribe button. That's the best way to support the channel and give this video a huge thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.